my team were a big underdog, I'd be slighting my team. We supposed to just come this series, get swept, and go home for the summer, I guess. We didn't make this long trip just to come down here and roll over and die. You know, they got to beat us four times. That's the way we're going to approach it. The Lakers were heavy favorites for good reason. Between the end of the regular season and the playoffs, Shaq, Kobe, and company entered the finals armed with a 19-game winning streak. By the time Game 1 arrived, it had been 68 days since L.A.'s last loss. That was the beauty of it. Not only were Philadelphia fans supportive of our team, I think we had the whole world support because of that, because of that David image against Goliath, Shaq, and Kobe. You know, nobody really gave us a chance. It's like all year we had to deal with that. You know, they're a good team, but... You know what I mean? So, we don't worry about what critics think. The only thing we worried about was what the people thought in that locker room. I knew we would be competitive because we had guys that would compete against Kobe at a high level. We had Dikembe who at least, you know, physically could play Shaq. The first five minutes of Game 1 hardly went according to Larry Brown's script, with the Lakers sprinting out to an 18-5 lead. The alley of the Shaq and the Faisal with a two-hand slam. But just as they had done all season, the Sixers fought back, ending the quarter on a 17-5 run. Then Allen Iverson kicked it into overdrive, scoring 15 points in the final 4 minutes 15 seconds of the second quarter. He ended the first half with 30 points. Midcourt pass to Bryant, stolen by Iverson. Here's the Allen to the scoop by a good. The Lakers overcame a 12-point Sixer lead midway through the third quarter, thanks in large part to the brute force of Shaquille O'Neal. I remember the matchup between uh, Dikembe and Shaq. I mean, that was, we had some incredible uh, slow motion replays of Dikembe defending him in the post, almost being bent over like this, trying to hold Shaq out, and Shaq just hitting him. LA's big man finished game one with 44 points and 20 rebounds. This slam put the Lakers up 94 92 with just under two minutes left. But the Sixers had an answer in the form of Eric Snow, whose leaner accounted for the final points of regulation and forced overtime. On the drive, Eric Snow begs the door, and he makes the layup. Eric Snow, where there's a will, there's a way. Overtime belonged to the visitors. Big buckets from Snow and Raja Bell, and the lasting image from Game 1 and perhaps the entire 2001 run. 101 to 99, Iverson against Tyrone Lue. Baseline right, he backs up, he fires two ball. Got it again! He's way too good! Iverson's jumper over Teron Lue gave the Sixers a four point lead they would never relinquish. When he stepped over Lue. Tyrone Lou, ooh, it was fabulous. I remember Sharon Stone was sitting down the aisle from me, and I'm yelling at her, ah, screaming at her, it was great. Yeah, I'd ask him just to step over a guy, and make a jumper in front of their big, and then yelling at him. Really showed, you know, the type of guy he was, and the, you know, where he could do things in, in a magical moment. There's no really proud in a great moment. I'm going to continue to celebrate for winning the game one. It was just fantastic. Iverson's numbers, 48 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, and 5 steals in 52 minutes. An epic performance on the NBA's biggest stage. It also gave the Sixers a series lead that no one saw coming. Well, almost no one. We got hard. We're going to play with that first. Play with the talent second. The glamour set, the glitter area, they're stunned here in Los Angeles. Anybody that betted on it, some broke people out there. I'm glad nobody didn't bet their life on it, because they definitely would be dead right now.